Hi friends, I'm Ron Strong and I am so excited to be here today. It is April 7th. I had to think about that. I was going to say tax day is like 10 days away, but then I realized that they moved it to May. So I feel like that should be a holiday. <laughs> um, let me know guys, let me know if you guys can hear me okay. I have my microphone in my ear, so hopefully I am coming in loud and clear. Hopefully, we'll see. Hi, Melissa. Hi, Carmen. Um, I am going to be talking about pineapple crochet today. So if you've been crocheting for, I feel like, any time, even just a few days, you've probably seen something to do with pineapple stitches. Pineapple stitches have been around almost as long as crochet itself. And I love it because they can be used in so many different ways. And they're so beautiful and they're so easy to do. They literally use traditionally just a few stitches. The double crochet, triple crochet, uh, single crochet, and chain stitch. Those are usually what you'll find in your pineapple stitches. Hi, Joanna. Thanks for joining us. Um, so what brought this on primarily was because, oh, I'm so excited. The cover design of Crochet Magazine may look familiar because it's mine. I'm so excited, you guys. This is the Easy Breezy Pineapple Topper, and it's so pretty. Hey, Shirley, how are you? Um, it's so, so pretty and so easy to do. Y'all won't believe how easy this is. I can't show you the pattern, obviously, but the pattern is like literally, not gonna lie, a seven rows. And then like some other things. It's like a page. It's not even there. Hi, Anna. Thank you, Shirley. I appreciate that. And thank you, everyone at Annie's. I'm so excited. Thank you, Anna. Um, so anyway, beautiful. I also have, wait for it. We're talking about pineapples today, but it's my show. So nobody can tell me what to do. So I'm going to show you some other things that are in. So first of all, are you guys ready for this? I love this afghan. I think it's so cool. This is the Annie's Moroccan Tile Afghan Club. Have you guys seen this yet? Okay, so my friend Lena Skavagerson designed that. Look at how cool that is. Oh my gosh, I love it. Absolutely love this blanket. You guys can sign up for the club. Let me tell you, I got to crochet a bit of this and... It was so much fun. It was so, so much fun. And it's just amazing. Um, there's a lot more in the magazine, including the Gothic Rose Afghan. Are you guys tired of me talking about it yet? <laughs> oh, so there's a link in the uh, description down below for the Moroccan Tile Afghan Club. So please check it out. It's so cool. Nobody asked me to talk about it, but I'm talking about it today because I just think it's such a cool... You guys know I love the kit clubs that Annie's has, and I am a part of all of them. I would show you that these dresser drawers behind me are filled with kit club kits that I haven't got to yet, but it's okay. We're not going to talk about it. Um, anyway, learn to crochet the Gothic Rose Afghan. Yay! So, I was doing a little bit of a peek. Hey, Janet, how are you? Wisconsin, we're kind of neighbors. Well, we were. I grew up in Michigan. So, anyway, the Gothic Rose Afghan, I was doing a little little sneak peek in around the website and saw that if you want the DVD, the DVD version of this class is now available on the Annie's website. How cool is that? You get all of my wonderful, amazing teaching, and you get the pattern, and it's in DVD form, so it's kind of there. Kim says hi from Nashville. We are neighbors. I'm in North Carolina right now. It's such a beautiful day today. It's like a good 88 degrees. <laughs> it is, it is sweltering. Okay, here we go. Here's the other thing. 
This is my Tunisian Shores blanket. This is another pattern that comes in this uh, magazine and it is so much fun. It's so easy to do. You can make this in an afternoon, I promise. It uses a DK weight yarn that's held double and an eight millimeter crochet hook. It's a blast. This one was so much fun to make. I really want this one back, okay? I want to make so many of the Tunisian shorts. So anyway, this is in the summer 2021 issue of Crochet Magazine. So let's, hey Nadine, how are you? Hi Linda. If I'm missing you guys saying hello, hey guys. Um, <laughs> it's cold by you in New Jersey. I will send some up. It's actually supposed to be back in the 70s next week, but today's a little crazy and it's 88 degrees, but I love it. I love the summer. So, but here in the studio, it gets so hot um, because we have all the studio lights coming in. Whew. But let me tell you. Anyway, okay. So, pineapple crochet. Let's talk about it. Pineapple crochet is a lot of fun because, like I said, it can absolutely um, be used for a variety of designs. And I'm actually going to show you how to stitch up a pineapple today, a really easy, quick pineapple that you're going to love. I'm going to show you how to crochet it step by step. So we might run a little bit longer than we normally do on these tutorials, but I think you'll love it. Sue says hi from Georgia. Tammy says hi from Nebraska. Hey guys. So, Pineapples, obviously, they are amazing for toppers, right? They're great for uh, kind of poncho, throw over style because they're light and they're lacy and they're wonderful. Now, another great iteration are shawls. This is one of my very favorite designs by my... I have a favorite designer, and I know I'm not supposed to say that, but my very favorite crochet designer, besides myself, is Lisa Gentry. Do you guys know who Lisa is? Lisa has designed some of the most beautiful designs. Um, and, whoops, and one of them is this pineapple rain shawl. And if you look closely, there's pineapple stitches that are running along the trim here. And this is from Annie Signature Designs. So it's part of the, this was, I don't remember which collection, but it was from one of their summer collections and it's just so beautiful. So you can use it uh, as trim. I'm sure you guys have seen another class for Annie's Creative Studio I did was for, um, what is it called? <laughs> I'm trying to think, I can't remember the name of it. I did a uh, lace blanket that was worked from the center out. And I can't remember the designer or the name. I apologize. If I remember it, I'll drop it in the comments after this video. But let's talk about some other amazing things you can do with pineapples. Look at this. That's a sock. So this is from a book that I wrote a long time ago called New Methods for Crochet Socks. It's not available anymore, but I used pineapples on a sock. How cool is that? This is called the falling pineapple sock because the pineapple is upside down. I like to be witty sometimes. <laughs> um, another um, uh, really cool way to incorporate it is in collars. So this is a shawl I did in my book, uh, Crochet Lacy Shawls. But you can see here, I just did pineapples all the way around. Love it. So let's talk about what a pineapple is. I actually have a crochet chart that I'm gonna show you and then we'll get into our stitching. So you're going to miss my beautiful face for just a little bit because I'm gonna swap the camera around so we can look at a crochet chart of a just a simple pineapple that you can probably find anywhere. So let me... Um, all right, so this is a crochet chart. And these are some pineapples, right? So pineapples primarily are made up of two distinct uh, sections. You have the stem of the pineapple, which is here. Those are traditionally worked in either double or triple crochet. Then you have the fl flower part of the pineapple, which is right up here. And that's kind of what forms this rounded portion. So there's always kind of two different portions. Like I said, there's the stem and the flower. Did you know that a pineapple is 
technically a flower? Now you do. And then in between pineapples, usually you have sections of either double crochet or such as on uh, the cover here, you can look closely and you'll be able to see that in between each of these sections, let me bring it closer to the camera, in between each of these sections of pineapples, you have uh, V stitches. So double crochet, chain one, double crochets. That is kind of what splits it up. That way you have distinct kind of pineapple motifs without necessarily uh, breaking up the laciness of it, right? Because we don't want something too heavy in between, then it's gonna look clunky. But you don't want all your pineapples to run together because then it's just going to look like a lace pattern without actually looking like it's kind of intentional, I guess is the word I'm looking for. So let's talk about our pineapples and getting ready. I'm gonna lower the camera so you guys can have a nice up close and personal view. Now I haven't had a manicure in a while because you know, the world shut down. So <laughs> you're gonna have to forgive me. Um, so anyway, let's take a look again here. You can really see these wonderful V stitches in between. Now, this particular crochet chart uses uh, double crochets in between instead of V stitches. It just depends. If I grab um, the pineapple rain shawl from Lisa Gentry, you can tell she actually uses uh, a wider stitch, more of a shell stitch rather than a V stitch to really define the sections around the pineapples. How cool is that? And you can see that her pineapples are different than mine. They look the same in the end, but it all has to do with the number of steps involved, the complexity within the pineapple. It's, it's, it's just going to depend on the designer and also you as a crocheter, what you're looking for and what you want. So let's take a look at how to actually stitch up our pineapple. So I have a small sample here. I need to find the page I was on. And all I've done is crocheted a really small number just to make sure that you guys can see, you know, what I'm working on. And I've worked my first row. Now what I've done is essentially I have a V stitch on one end. I have the start of my pineapple. So the base of my stem is here in the middle. To start, you do traditionally a really wide V stitch. So this is a double crochet, chain three, double crochet, all into the same chain. Then I chain two, I work a V stitch, which is a double crochet, chain one, double crochet, and then I work a double crochet in my very last chain. So this is, again, just a swatch. I'm not trying to create a pattern here or anything like that. I just wanna show you the steps involved in creating a pineapple and why I love them so much. I'm actually thinking of designing a new afghan with a pineapple stitch. I have not designed an afghan with pineapple stitch yet, so I need to get on that. All right, working on our second row, of course, I need to chain three to get myself all up and ready. Into the V stitches, traditionally, you're going to simply work another V stitch. So to work another V stitch, it's a double crochet, chain one, double crochet. The patterns will obviously have, you know, what exactly they think of uh, V stitches or what they're calling for in that pattern. Remember, all patterns are a little bit different. So it takes, it, it, it pays off to take a little time to read the special stitch section. All right. So now I'm at the stem and I need to build on my stem. To do that, I am going to work uh, some triple crochets because I like them. So I'm gonna yarn over my hook twice, insert it into that chain three space between the two double crochets and work one triple crochet. Then I'm gonna chain one and I'm going to repeat that process until I have five triple crochets and I will have four chain one spaces. We are hope 
where I'm teaching everyone how to make a pineapple stitch and kind of what goes into them and how they can all be different and wonderful. All right, so I have my five triple crochets with my four chain one spaces. Now here's the deal. Depending on the, the pineapple you're making, this stem will be different. I chose for the Easy Breezy Pineapple Topper to do triple crochets and chain one spaces to keep it nice and light and airy. However, if you're looking for something, here's another pineapple that I was working on. If you're looking for something that's a little bit more stable, you're going to want to, uh, you will kind of work just double crochets. That's what I'm trying to say. You'll just work double crochets or you would just work triple crochets with no chain spaces in between on this first section of the stem. You can kind of create a more solid foundation for your pineapple. Again, there's so many different ways to do pineapples that it's totally up to you. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to finish this row by working a v-stitch into my v-stitch and then I'm going to turn my work. Now obviously I have to chain some and work my first v-stitch there. All right so back to the base of the pineapple. Now I can choose to make this pineapple long and skinny or short and fat. It's totally up to me. I like short and fat pineapples. <laughs> I just love them. Um, short and fat, to me, they look a little bit more like pineapples. Once they get too long and skinny, I just don't like them as much. So I'm gonna move right into the flower. So this is my stem. This is the base of my pineapple and it's done. I don't have to do anything else. Now I get to move into the flower. So to do that, I'm gonna chain one and I'm going to find that first chain space. Then I'm going to single crochet. Now here's what we're doing, and this is important. Pineapples have a tendency to look like, here we go, we're gonna turn this sideways. Pineapples have a tendency to look like we're decreasing stitches, but we're not decreasing any stitches. What we're doing is we're swapping stitches out and changing the placement. So, Instead of working the stitch in this row, I'm going to chain one before the pineapple and after the pineapple. That way, I'm not altering the stitch count at the end of my row. All I'm doing is changing where I'm putting that stitch count. So you'll see these chains here, right where the head of my hook is. See how they get longer? That's because I'm using that as a way to shape the top of my pineapple. I'm using that as a way to kind of decrease the amount of stitches in my pineapple without decreasing the overall number of stitches in my pattern. The number one rule in every single garment that you make is to count your stitches at the end of every row and make sure they are staying consistent. Okay, back to the crocheting. So I single crocheted into my first chain one space. Now I'm going to chain three. And the chain three is, it is pretty universal. Most of the time you'll see a chain three. And then I'm gonna single crochet in the next chain one space. I'm gonna chain three, single crochet, chain three, and single crochet. Now I'll chain one, work a V-stitch and a double crochet. But before we move on, I wanna give you one more tip. You might wanna get your pencils out for this one. So when it comes to any kind of lace motif that has these chain uh, sections, such as before the pineapple or within the pineapple, if you are a tight crocheter, go up a hook size or add an extra chain. Is it going to alter your stitch count in the long run? Yes. However, you're not going to get nearly as many puckers. I work with cotton a lot, especially in the summer here in the South, and cotton doesn't have a whole lot of give horizontally. It has a lot of give vertically. With that in mind, I want to make sure that my stitches are staying consistent. 
if you have to add in an extra chain here and there to make sure that things aren't puckering up, that's totally okay. Just write it down and make sure you remember, all right? So I'll chain one. I'm gonna work a V-stitch in my last V-stitch. And then I'm gonna double crochet in the top of my chain three. Now I'm gonna chain three and turn. I'm gonna work a V-stitch in my first V-stitch. Whoops. Okay, so now we need to chain two. Before on the last row, we only chained one. We're gonna chain two. Then we'll single crochet in that first chain three space. Then we'll chain three and single crochet in the next chain three space. Chain three and single crochet in the next chain three space. So you can see that within our pineapple, we're just, on the previous row, we did three chain three spaces. Now we're just doing two. Then we'll chain two and V-stitch in our very last V-stitch. All right, so now I need to chain and turn, work that first V-stitch, and now we're back to our pineapple. Now, you guessed it, instead of chaining two, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna chain three, but this is not part of our pineapple. This is occurring before our pineapple, so we need to keep that in mind. Then we're going to single crochet in the next chain three space, chain three, single crochet in the next chain three space, chain three, V-stitch in the next V-stitch, and double crochet in the last double crochet. Now I'm gonna chain three and turn. I'm going to work a V-stitch in that V-stitch. And now we're at the top of our pineapple. We don't have any more chain three spaces to work. This is, like I said, a short and squat pineapple. You can see it coming together right there but I still need to work a single crochet in this chain three space. So to do that, I'm going to simply chain four, one, two, three, and four, single crochet into that chain three space, then chain four, and work a V-stitch in our V-stitch. And that, my friends, is how you work a pineapple. Pretty cool, huh? Now, as you continue, your pineapples are going to stack right on top of one another. And so what you have to kind of think about is how they're gonna end up doing that. Now, this pineapple, it's pretty easy to see. On the next row, we would work our, uh, kind of the first row of our stem. We would do a double crochet, chain three, double crochet inside of this single crochet. Then we would just repeat all of our steps and build it up from there. One of the things I love about crochet, especially pineapple stitches, is that when you're working on something like this, it looks so complicated and it looks kind of difficult, right? But all of the steps that I just showed you, you'll just repeat over and over again. If you simply take it section by section and stitch by stitch, it'll come together beautifully. It just takes a little bit of practice and a little bit of knowledge of basic stitches for you to accomplish beautiful lacy patterns that feature pineapple motifs. So I'm gonna switch you guys back around here. 
Alrighty. There we go. There I am. <laughs> I had to take off my glasses. So that's kind of how you work your um, your pineapple motif. And I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit and learning how to work these stitches. Like I said, there are so many different pineapple stitches that you can crochet. Um, and from short and squat to tall and skinny, Afghans, um, garments, shawls, socks. They're just, they're amazing. And yeah, Shirley says she loves making pineapple doilies. Me too. Actually, what's funny is I have, I don't know where it is. Um, I think it's in my closet, but I actually have a um, pineapple doily that my great grandmother made um, somewhere around here. And it's beautiful. It's actually a Christmas pineapple doily. She made, um, let me see if I can show you guys on this. So the stem, she made the stem uh, green and the top of the pineapple is white. And then she added puff stitches around the pineapple in red. So it kind of frames it and it almost looks like a Christmas flower. So, oh, everyone wants to know what yarn I'm using. And I hate to disappoint you, but this, I have no idea what this is. <laughs> this is, it's a cotton acrylic blend. Um, it's a worsted weight. I love working with cotton acrylic blends. Um, one of my very favorites uh, is Cotton Ease. Uh, that's a great one. Uh, bamboo Pop, which is, a, I think, a bamboo acrylic blend or bamboo cotton acrylic blend. Um, that's a good one. And then I'll tell you the one that I used in the pattern because that one is almost exactly like this one. Um, and that's one that I really fell in love with when I was designing. I don't always get to choose my yarn. This is Lion Brand 24-7 Cotton. It's a medium worsted weight mercerized cotton. In um, one thing I will say, let's talk about yarn real quick before I go. Um, when it comes to these kind of garments, um, especially this kind of garment, uh, you, it's worked side to side, right? So because it's side to side, what you have to do uh, is choose a cotton yarn that is going to have some good hefty weight to it, uh, but that's you don't want to choose the kind of cotton that you would use in your kitchen. So don't look for like the dishwasher cotton, like peaches and cream or anything like that. You want to, um, you really want to get some like mercerized cotton. Mercerized cotton is a type of, it's a type of cotton that's gone through a process called mercerization in which chemicals are applied to the yarn to make the, the colors color fast. They won't fade. A lot of regular uh, cotton will fade. And then the other thing is um, it creates a really, really strong yarn. So uh, that's why I chose it because I love um, a lot of different yarns and I work with a lot of different yarns, but I also know that some yarns aren't made to last a whole long time, but the yarns that I use are. So there you go. If you want a good kind of dupe of this, um, Lion Brand 24-7 Cotton, um, the Bamboo Pop is good, Cotton Ease, anything like that. So until next time, friends, I'll be going live in May. I don't remember the date, but we will post an event Always make sure that you're checking out any social media. We're on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube and Pinterest. We are everywhere you are. Make sure that you take the time to follow us and like us and share what you're working on. We love seeing pictures. I personally love it. Um, you can follow me on all my social media at Ron Strong. Um, and we'll always post events here on the Facebook page to let you know when we're going to go live and what we're going to be talking about. Um, so if you guys want to see a particular thing in a live, please comment. Oh, I'm going to be back on May 21st. Thank you. Yay. So I'm going to be back May 21st. I'm very excited. And you guys are going to be seeing lots more of my face around here. So... Uh, until then, make sure you sign up for Amy's Creative Studio. I know that I talk about it all the time, but I swear you're going to love it. Sign up for Amy's Creative Studio. You can sign up today and it's free. Yeah, starting in May, I am going to be live on the third Friday of every month at noon. So add it to your schedules. Okay. All right, friends. 
from me and all my friends. <laughs> There's nobody here. All right, bye guys. <laughs> I'll talk to you later.